Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be going over some very generous donations that I received from my viewers over the past period. And the first package we're going to be taking a look at is this one here from Christoph from Germany. Now Christoph has already sent in some stuff in the past. I try to pick these things up uh, as soon as I can, but sometimes life gets in the way, schedules get in the way, actual job gets in the way. So uh, depending on what's sitting on the bench, what I feel like doing, I try to prioritize stuff, but it's not like I have an actual system or a, a good way of doing that. So sometimes it takes a while for me to review stuff. I hope everybody understands that. But with that being said, I would like to offer my apologies to Stefan here from Germany who sent me this package here with a very interesting 3D video card inside that I have yet to review. But I promise you, Stefan, I will be prioritizing it. I will be making a video on it in the next couple of weeks. I have had a period of inactivity on YouTube for 18 months, so my apologies for that, but I'm back on track. I really enjoy making these videos for you, so let's get started. So we've got the box open and we've got this nice little letter from Chris. As promised, here is the special graphics card. I already told you the crazy circumstances under which I received it, whether you believe it or not. So here you go, this one is for you. I'm not going to spoil what special graphics card we are talking about here, but if you look at the last video I did in 2022, you'll get an idea. So yeah, please stick around till the end of the video where you will see what card we are talking about. Other than that, we have a cool sound card in here, apparently, a Voodoo Banshee or Rush, and lots of other stuff to unpack. So let's get started. And again, I can't express uh, enough gratitude for people that send in this type of stuff. I really appreciate that a lot, and it just proves the kindness that uh, sits around this whole retro community. So yeah, lots of stuff to unpack here. Everything is well packaged. We have some a small components, some bigger components. So yeah, really excited to see what we have here. Lots of cards. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. And yeah, would you look at that? So I already see lots of video cards here. I see some other cards that I can't immediately identify. There seem to be some CPUs, a motherboard and a mystery box here. So yeah, I propose that we get started with this one, see what we have inside. And inside we've got some more boxes, so yeah, let's check them out. Okay, so first one, we have some CPUs here. Here we have a CPU cooler with the CPU uh, attached. So this is an Intel Pentium 75, one of the first mainstream Pentiums uh, on the market. Uh, we have another Intel CPU here with cooler attached. This is the Intel MMX 200 megahertz, a couple of years uh, more recent. And we've got some nice IBM uh, CPUs. We've got an AMD CPU and uh, another IBM one. So this one here is the PR300. We also have the PR233 with a nice little gold uh, heat spreader. And we also have an AMD K5 to compete with the Intel Pentium 100. So yeah, nice little collection of CPU so far. Let's continue. And here we have another Intel CPU. This kind of plastic uh, PGA packaging here used for MMX CPUs. So a really popular CPU here, this 200 megahertz MMX CPU. Next up, two ceramic uh, packaged CPUs, one Intel 386, a DX25 megahertz, and an uh, ST486, so not an Intel, not an AMD, but an ST, a DX280 megahertz. So yeah, really nice one, 40 megahertz uh, bus speed. In the next one, we have another couple of ceramic CPUs, all socket three CPUs like the way that they are packaged here to protect the pins. We have an ST486 DX266 and an Intel DX266 megahertz. So it will be fun to compare the two. 
And then this is a rather special one, the AMD SX266 and a DX4120. So yeah, really, really cool to have these AMD CPUs in my collection. I don't have these two yet. So yeah, I really appreciate it. And moving along, two more AMDs, the DX280 and the DX266 megahertz CPU. So yeah, really nice collection of CPUs. Definitely some CPUs that I want to explore further, like the AMD K5 PR100. See how this matches up to the Intel Pentium 100. Lots of similarly clocked CPUs from different vendors to compare. I think I still have a 386 board that needs a CPU. And I also have a whole stack of Super Socket 7 motherboards that don't have CPU. So yeah, these will definitely find a nice home in the future. Okay, so time to look at the cards and we'll start with this one, an AGP video card, the Intel 740. Now Intel had high hopes for this 740 uh, graphics chip, but unfortunately it had disappointing performance. This particular card here is from NEC. So yeah, nice to have the 740 AGP in your collection, but it's not going to break any speed records. Next one here, we have the PCI Cirrus Logic, a very simple PCI card from 1995, one megabytes of RAM, excellent for DOS gaming. So the next card that we have is another PCI card. This is an Eontronics with an S3 Verge DX chip, four megabytes of EDO RAM on this particular card. So yeah, also an excellent card for uh, DOS gaming. Next card that we have is another S3 Verge, but this time rebranded by Diamond Multimedia as the Stealth 3D2000. A card from 1996 with two megabytes of RAM, expandable to four megabytes of RAM. Next up, we have another Diamond card, this time the Stealth 64, another PCI a video card from 1995, this time based on the S3 Vision 968 chip. This one has uh, four megabytes of RAM in total, so we have two megabytes on board and an additional two megabytes on this little uh, daughter board here that kind of plugs in to the video card like so. Next up, we have another card from Diamond, an AGP card. And this is the Viper V770 AGP, 32 megabytes of RAM, a TNT2 chipset. So really nice card from Diamond Multimedia from 1999, excellent for 3D gaming. And next up, we have another video card, only this time it's an 8-bit ISA video card. So we are really excited to see what we have here. And this contains some Cirrus Logic chips. It's a Video 7 card. So this one supports all kinds of video modes like VGA, EGA, CGA, MDA, Hercules. So yeah, really nice 8-bit ISA card with the dip switches here to configure the various video modes. So yeah, excellent, uh, excellent card here. Next up, we have another AGP card. Uh, let's see what we have here from Elsa. On the back, we can see that this is an Elsa Eraser 2 P16, which is a Rivet TNT card. Not the best of uh, Rivet TNT cards. Tom's hardware reviewed it as being slower than others, less overclockable, worst cooling, and no additional features. But yeah, good driver support, apparently. So yeah, next a video card, and this is a card from Matrix, the G200. So it's a Millennium card, four megabytes of RAM, card from 1998. A uh, connector for an additional RAM stick, giving it a total of 8 megabytes of RAM. Not really good for 3D gaming, but excellent graphics in Windows. Okay, so next card, another Elsa card, only this time with an active cooler. So hopefully a little bit beefier than the 
Eraser 2. And this is the Eraser 3 Pro, which features a TNT2 Pro chipset. So yeah, it should be substantially faster than the other one. Yeah, nice uh, AGP card with a TNT2 chip from 1999, I guess. And continuing on, we have another Elsa uh, video card, a card from 1998 featuring a PCI connector. So this is the Elsa Gloria Synergy 8. This one features a 3D Labs Permedia 2 chip. Um, not the most powerful 3D card, but yeah, interesting card to have. So I'll definitely check out uh, the performance of this 3D Labs Permedia 2. Okay, so next up we have another PCI card again from Diamond Multimedia Systems from 1998. A lovely PCI Viper V550 16 megabyte video card. Yeah, really love these Riva TNT chipsets. I mean, things went really fast in 1997, 98, 99. So yeah, really lovely to have this 1998 card. Next up, we have a different type of card. So let's see what we have here. And this is an 8-bit ISA sound card, the, the EXM Audio FX card. So we have a game port uh, there and some audio connectors. Yeah, really nice old card from 1991 from ATI Technologies. I didn't really know that these guys made sound cards as well. So yeah, really lovely card to have. We have a chip here, Stereo FX, copyright 1991. And we also have a Yamaha WM3812 OPL2 chip. So yeah, really cool sound card here. Next up, we have a more modern sound card, a PCI card, the Sound Blaster Audigy Platinum EX, or the SB0090. Features a Firewire port and some audio connectors. Next up, another small package, which seems to contain a CPU. Only it appears that this one is sitting on one of those upgrade adapters so that you could use you know, three volt CPUs on five volt motherboards as it contains a uh, voltage converter here on the PCB. So yeah, let's take a look at what uh, CPU we have on here. And what we have here is the AMD DX4 100, only this time it's the 100 SV8B, meaning that this is the version with the right back cache. So yeah, pretty interesting to have this on this board. We'll definitely try it out as well. Has various jumpers here probably to configure various uh, CPUs and voltages. So we'll need to check that out. So yeah, pretty interesting to have this uh, adapter board here. And next up, we have another CPU, this time a slot one. This is an Intel Pentium 2. Let's see the clock frequency on this one. So this is a 266 megahertz Intel Pentium 2 MMX. The original ones came out at 233 megahertz, but yeah, still a pretty early uh, Pentium 2 model here. And that Pentium 2 will go nicely with this motherboard, I think. So yeah, let's see what we have here. So yeah, this is a, a rather lovely slot one uh, motherboard from uh, Gigabyte, the GA686LX4, so Intel LX chipset. So yeah, this early Pentium 2 chipset from Intel will go nicely with our Intel 266 megahertz CPU and will also act as a nice test bed for the various uh, video cards that we have here. But now, time for the piece de resistance. And you can probably already see what video card I have here. So I still can't believe it that Chris was kind enough to send this over to me. This card has kind of been my nemesis here on the channel. I tried to acquire it uh, two years ago, but yeah, had a horrible uh, transaction. 
But yeah, now finally I am the proud owner of this uh, 3DFX Voodoo 5 video card. Now there are some issues with the fans and the card might need a recap, but all in all the card appears to be working. So yeah, I'm really anxious to try this one out. I mean, I can't thank Chris enough for sending this uh, over to me. I mean, I think Chris also knows how much these cards go for in the secondhand market. So yeah, really, really cool of Chris to send this uh, over. So yeah, a huge chunk of parts here that I will be taking a look at. So definitely expect some uh, videos in the near future covering these CPUs, uh, video cards. I mean, there's lots of stuff that I need to go through here, but I will definitely do so. In the meantime, uh, I also want to leave a quick note to Stefan that I will be looking at the uh, Matrox Millennium and the M3D card as well. So you can expect that definitely in the next coming weeks. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have some ideas on future videos regarding this hardware, please let me know. Please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. A big thanks again for Chris and Stefan for the donations. And I hope to see everybody in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.